This battle is affecting us as our sexual natures and desires are drifting more away from God's worldview. And to counter this offensive against us, we need to come up with a plan, a battle plan to bring our sexual natures back to within its God-honoring boundaries of marriage. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to design a battle plan. And to design this battle plan, we'll look at three different areas of our being that are affected by sexual content. Our eyes, our minds, and our hearts. But here's the thing with these three areas of our being. They are also the tools we need to bring our sexual natures back in line with God. The first area of our being that we're looking at is our eyes. Now, the way male brains are wired, men receive sexual gratification through the eyes. Guys, this is important to know about yourself. Also know this. It's one thing to notice the beauty of a woman, and it's another thing to sexually desire the beauty of a woman. There's a difference. And if we're not careful, a man's eyes are always taking mental pictures of anything that peaks our sexual desire. And because of this, we need to be proactive, not reactive, proactive as to where our eyes are wandering. An example of this proaction for our eyes is demonstrated by Job. In the book of Job, we see God describing Job as the finest man in all the land, a man of complete integrity who feared God and stayed away from evil. And all in all, Job has a good life. But due to no fault of his own, his life quickly unravels as Job loses everything he owns and everyone he loves. And throughout this book, Job makes a series of speeches justifying that he's done nothing wrong to deserve the torment that he's going through. And at one point during one of these speeches, to prove his innocence, Job says this. He says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust at a young woman. If my heart has been seduced by a woman, or if I have lusted for my neighbor's wife, then let my wife serve another man. Let other men sleep with her. Yikes. That's quite a covenant. You see, Job proactively made a covenant with his eyes to not let them wander in lust. And men, this is the proactive covenant that we need to make with our eyes that we would train our eyes not to objectify women or to soak up their sexuality, but to look at them for who they are, daughters of the Lord Most High. One of the books that I read to prep for the sermon is called Every Man's Battle, and I highly suggest it for anyone who would like to read some more on this topic. And a suggestion in this book for men to eliminate lustfully looking at women is by training their eyes to look away from that of sexual desire. To do this is called bouncing your eyes. And honestly, it seems a little silly, but it's one way to starve your eyes and retrain them to not wander lustfully. To bounce your eyes, what you do is the next time you see an attractive gal on your screen or in person is notice their beauty, but then look away. Don't allow your eyes to soak up her sexuality with your sexual desire. Bounce your eyes away from her to a safe place. Scripture calls this taking every thought captive to Christ. And as you bounce your eyes, you're taking that thought captive and making it obedient to Christ. And the thing is, is that over a six-week period, this book says that as you bounce your eyes more, it becomes a habit as your eyes are retrained to avoid the temptation of sexual desire. 
You see, men without restraints, our eyes play a part in our susceptibility to sexual sin. But restraining our eyes can play a role in our redemption. Bounce your eyes and take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. The next area of our being that is affected by sexual content is our mind. And this area goes hand in hand with our eyes in that they work together. Back in 2004, a senator opened a congressional hearing to debate whether or not sexual content should be continued to be protected as free speech or whether it should be regulated like that of addictive drugs. One of the expert witnesses at this hearing testified, and they said this, that modern science allows us to understand that the underlying nature of addiction, now listen, the underlying nature of an addiction to sexual content is chemically and nearly identical to a heroin addiction. Heroin is one of the most, most addictive drugs in the world. And what this means is that repeatedly viewing sexual content, in a sense, it rewires our brain. It gives us, a, it gives us a chemical high that leads to addiction similar to that of a heroin addict. And this phenomenon is called neuroplasticity. And this is how it works. When viewing sexual content, the pleasure-causing chemical known as dopamine is released in mass quantities in the brain. As the brain becomes overstimulated, the connections between the neural pathways become stronger and stronger. The need for dopamine becomes greater and greater. And the brain chemistry changes to that of a heroin addict. It's like every time sexual content is viewed, train tracks are laid in the brain that make the desire to view more sexual content that is deemed more graphic in nature, automatic and less under control like a runaway freight train. And that's neuroplicit, neuro, I'm sorry, neuroplasticity, and it's scary. There is hope, though. If sexual content can rewire the brain to that of resembling a heroin addict, then by the grace of God and only by the grace of God can the brain be rewired to being in line with God's will for our sexual natures. Scripture says this, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let God transform you by changing the way you think. Let God tear up the tracks of addiction that have been laid down and let him transform you by laying down new, fresh tracks. And to start renewing your mind, you first need to move closer to God. And folks, I can't overemphasize this. And I know this sounds like a broken record coming up, coming from up here on this stage, but you've got to move closer to God. Now, how do you do this? Some ways include getting in the word more. Spend more time with him. Pray with him. Listen to worship music. Get into a small group. Serve others. Whatever it is, get in the way of his transforming power. And once you've done this, it's then time to renew your mind by cutting off the sources of your sexual temptation. Cut the head off the snake. And this may include getting rid of your smartphone and getting a flip phone. This might mean getting rid of the internet altogether. It might mean getting a software called Covenant Eyes. And this software tracks your internet history and in live time shares it with an accountability partner. And speaking of which, another step to renewing your mind is to have an accountability 
partner. An accountability partner is another man or group of men of which you can be honest with about your sexual content use on a regular basis for far too long. Men have tried to go along with this battle to fight it in isolation and silence, only to continue to fall to temptation and lose the battle. An accountability group brings your struggle into the light and it gives you a band of brothers to fight the battle alongside you. Allow God to transform you by changing the way you think. And as we close, the last area of our being that is affected by sexual content is our heart. Our heart is the innermost part of our being that is affected by sexual content. Now, a lot of what I say here going forward speaks to married men, but unmarried men, make sure you listen as well. As someday, you too may give your sexual nature and your sexual desires to your wife. And when you do this, you will want them to be as pure as is possible. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations. A side effect of habitually watching sexual content is something called sexual anorexia. And sexual anorexia is no longer physically being able to or willing to engage in sexual relations with your spouse. And this is because what happens to our hearts when watching sexual content is that we're redirecting our sexual natures away from our spouses and towards something else. Now, Scripture says that when our sexual natures are not directed towards our spouse, we deprive our spouse, deprive it's kind of an interesting world, word. What, what does that mean? In the original language of the New Testament, the word deprive also means to rob or to steal. So if to look at sexual content is to direct our sexual nature away from our spouse, then to do so is to rob or steal from our spouse what is rightfully theirs. And to change this, we need a change in our hearts by refocusing our sexual natures exclusively towards our spouse. And taking into account all that we've covered earlier to guard our eyes, to guard our minds, we need to guard our hearts by cherishing her again. Cherish her by thinking the world of her, value her, adore her, admire her, acknowledge her the way God acknowledged Eve in the garden as a very good gift from God because guys, that's what she is. Men, enjoy your wives. As scripture says, let your wife be a fountain of blessing to you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. May you always be captivated by her love. Change your heart by cherishing her again and by redirecting your sexual nature and desire exclusively towards her. Now, at the beginning of this sermon, we called attention to the fact that sexual temptation is everywhere. 
looking to exploit, destroy, and take advantage of the goodness of your sexual nature. We need to be aware of that battle because that battle is the reality of where our world is at today. And if we don't have a plan, sexual content and temptation will find us. Therefore, use the battle plan we built today to set up a defensive perimeter, protecting our eyes, our minds, and our hearts from the detrimental effects of viewing online content. Or in other words, keep the fire in the fireplace. If you need help in this area of sexual content, I do have some resources available. I also have an avenue toward a accountability group. If you're interested in this, certainly give me a call, shoot me an email. I'd love to help if I can. 